After long navigation, leaving from Lisbon, stopping at Madeira, and finally arriving at the Canary Islands, that means that I can finally use my hydrophone. So basically, what is a hydrophone? A hydrophone is this strange looking thing right here, this part, which is a microphone that can go in the water. So it records at 360 degrees around. And what we wanted to do is go as deep down as possible because we want to eliminate all of the boat noise, the wind noise, the wave noises. So how did I do that? I took the 15 meter cable of the hydrophone and I put it in a 10 meter cable uh, garden tube, actually. And I added two kilograms of weights and I also drilled a hole in it so that it fills up with water. Because what I wanted to do is that when it goes in the water, it has to go straight down as possible, as fast as possible. So once that part is in the water, the boat is stabilized and we have maybe a siding, maybe not. We put this part of the hydrophone into the recorder. And then what also helps is plugging in a speaker because this means that we hear something, we might hear whales that we don't see yet. So. Once I hear something I want to record, this recorder records at 96 kilohertz to have a nice spectrum range so I can analyze some, some sounds afterwards. And now let's go for whales! Well, well, now the game is to spot a fin, then trying to get as close as we can, but not too close. Then we furl the sails, we're keeping only the mainsail to be silent so that MK can record them. And we are going to try not to disturb them and trying to follow them as smoothly as we can. Why are we here in the south of Tenerife, right behind Enceda? This place is actually a hotspot for short fin pilot whales because there's a very steep slope going from zero meters off the coast or to around a thousand meters right where we are so on 1.5 nautical miles and shorefin pilot whales actually go down from 500 to a thousand meters to dive for food so for squid octopus small fishes and then they come back to the surface to breathe so this is where we're hoping to have as many sightings as possible So we just came back from five amazing days of sailing together with Stan and Aya. Aya is a marine biologist friend of mine and we studied together. So tell us Aya, what did we see? We 
we saw so many different species of dolphins, two false killer whales, and also hundreds of pilot whales. At least, and maybe right. one orca, but we're not sure. But best of all, we have amazing recordings. Let's check it out. Let's say it was my first time conducting field research myself with people helping me out, my super assistants. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and it's really cool because we get to decide ourselves where we're going, what we're going to do. We decide if what we have already sampled is good enough, how we can make it better. It was incredible actually, very exciting because it's so different, like even the sampling techniques that approach, no, it's completely different. You don't take water samples, you just go on your sailing boat in search of whales and fins popping out of the sea surface and then when you spot them you're like, okay, action, we have to do this and that and then the other thing and it's super great. Yeah. You could have so much luck in the first hours uh, of the day and then complete nothingness for a lot of hours, just boredom and you don't know what to do, you still have to be on the boat and observe the sea, but at the same time you're there just waiting for something and nothing happens and you're like, okay, and then all of a sudden you see a blow and you're like, whoa, <laughs> there I used to sail racing boats, so usually uh, I sail fast and when I, uh, I saw many time whales, but it's only like a, a quick shot. Like I, I can't, yeah, I can't stay with them. <laughs> so this time, the the goal was to sail slow. So it was really nice. And uh, I think the, the main feeling I have is that it was crazy to be able to sail and to listen through the speaker at the same time. It was like amazing to actually hear them when we were sailing. You know, when we were uh, cutting the engine and staying only with the main sail. I was really surprised that we uh, we always managed to not cross their way to be side to side, mm -hmm. but sometimes they were coming right into yeah. us. They changed their direction. Like yeah, they, they do it was sort of we are here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are yeah. letting you and know. And it was not like a, okay, they were curious, but not too much. But but they were not afraid of the of the humans. Yeah. 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 And we did notice that when the ferries approached when we could barely, like, we couldn't hear them in the hydrophone anymore, right? Like, we could hear them getting distance, we yeah. could hear the rumbling of the, the huge engine coming through, yeah. approaching and then leaving again, and at that moment, I mean, we can definitely hear that they just start kind of activating, they start doing a lot yeah. more sounds, there's a lot more action going on under the sea, mm -hmm. but, I mean, they, for me, it's, it's definitely the fact that they have to produce more to be heard above the whole engine. Yeah. But they're still, but they still continue their daily lives. I mean, it's just a vocal activity like we would do when we're in a bar or when we're in whatever kind of situation yeah, where there's already true. a lot of noise. Hmm. Now the next step is going to go compare it with what we see with the whale watchers, with the people that live here, with research that has that has already been conducted. So we've kind of done like our side project, and we can. It's it's cool to see how close it is to like super scientific research that has been done here for 20 years and then something that we can do in five days and then after that obviously I want to bring the whole music dimension into it and use it as a means for science communication and actually using this information to make a change so the next part is going to be more of an activism kind of action yeah. probably more passive activism for my part but 
which is way more efficient, no? It's probably, I, I, I think. I think it is. Yeah. That's what's crazy about the Canary Islands is that there's so many different types of categories of people that live here. There's the locals, there's like the resorts, golf kind of situation, then the tourists that come but that can be in the resorts or just actually interested in the actual culture. And then there's a bunch of scientists as well that just live here studying what happens already. So I think it's going to be interesting getting a bit of a bit from from everyone, whale watchers and fairies as well. Okay, let's show them. Let's show them. <laughs> let's, show them. <laughs> let's go talk. <laughs> Watching, we were we tried to talk to the captain, so we were close to there. We saw right in front, like through the captain's vision, there was a big group of pilot whales, and so basically we were going straight for them. And so he came out and talked to us because he saw us, and we he were wasn't able to, very happy. <laughs> no, he's not happy to see us. And then we asked them what I basically asked them what they just if they moved the boat or if some if they did something to avoid the collision. collision they never, yeah. And he was like, no, they just dive. Like <laughs> we're on a we're on a straight line autopilot and they're they're supposed to dive. <laughs> no, then then later on he explained that basically the fast ferries, which are other ones, not this one, mm -hmm. have two fins that kind of cut the the, the water mm -hmm. so that they can go very fastly. Mm -hmm. And then this one has only one turbine or I don't know the how it's it called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and then. That because of that, um, the pilot waves just go down. They know. They know. So and I asked how deep is the boat, and he said a lot. <laughs> so we asked him about the radar. If he saw something on the radar, if it was, if they reacted to something, and he said no, that's just for small fishing boats. Yeah, so and then also too. thermal cameras, no? Then not the, the not there are no thermal, <laughs> thermal cameras. Ah, yeah. like interesting, that. right? Yeah, that was intense. Yeah. All right, we're here in Los Cristianos, fresh off of the ferry that we took. Uh, we had some really good reactions from the tourists that we were able to approach, showed them the video. Um, it was incredible. It was really cool. Yeah. And we had we were really lucky to spot quite a few groups of pilot whales on the boat. And so actually the tourists that we showed the video to came back to us like, hey guys, we just saw the pilot whales that you guys showed on the video. And then we came, we went with them and saw them and talked a bit more about everything. And it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I especially liked the part that there were children who saw the video and were like, wow, what is this? <laughs> oh, look, the sun. Oh, so nice. <laughs>
So we just talked to a few whale watchers that came back from their trip, and we weren't allowed to film them. It's we're realizing that it's a very sensitive subject to talk about. Um, it's basically business first. That's what it's there for. Um, we were interested in the boat that they have because they have specific tubes around the propeller to make less noise. And so they have noticed that whales are a bit more interested. But then again, how do we know if they're not approaching them more or not? Um, this is a marine protected area, so they're supposed to be careful about the whole environment and how many whales are there. We asked if there were any changes in the recent years. Um, they said that there were a lot more whales, probably thanks to COVID. Um, ferries, same thing. They say that the whales are actually used to them and so they just dive under when the ferry comes. So I guess the whales just adapted their whole habitat living to that one particular thing. And yeah, we asked if they wanted to have a hydrophone on board and one of the guys said that they're actually not really interested in the sounds. They just want to see a show for their sea whales and dolphins jump out of the water. So yeah, <laughs> not sure what to do with all that. But I keep a very positive mindset towards the whole situation because I know that there are passionate people that work in these whale watching companies. And I myself have brought these vocalizations to random people. I've seen the reactions. I know that they are touched by the lives that are in the nature that surrounds us. And if I add a bit of violence into it, I know that the emotional connection is gonna be even stronger. So this is just the beginning of the journey and I really can't wait to see what's gonna happen in the future.